Hey, welcome to part three in our series on how to build an easy, fast smoothing plane. If you haven't seen parts one and two yet, you should go back and watch those because this video won't make much sense if you haven't seen those. When we left off at the end of part two, we had just assembled and glued up our plane stock. So now, the glue is going to be drying and we can hop right back into the build. While you're waiting for the glue to dry, it's a good time to get a couple of other details worked out. Uh, one thing that you can do is you can get the cross pin sorted out. Now, we're not going to make one of those fancy Krenov style pins with the flat side and the narrow ends and all of that. That's a lot of work. We're just going to use a regular cylinder of pretty much anything you have sitting around. Um, a lot of people just use a common hardwood dowel, which is a fine choice. You can also use brass. Wait, there it is. Uh, brass is fine. You can use a piece of aluminum. You could cut the head off a bolt if there's a long enough unthreaded section. Um, I have a lot of steel sitting around because I also do metal work, so I'm just going to use a little piece of steel rod. Um, all you need to do is take whatever material you're using and cut it to the width of your plane, and then I usually round off the edges just a little bit to make it easier to slide into the holes once we drill them. While you're waiting, you can also prepare the material for the wedge that you're going to be using. This is the one that came out of the wooden pickle. It needs to be the width of your plain iron. It's got to be a little bit shorter than your iron. This one's shorter by about a quarter inch. That'll be about fine. And this one's about five eighths of an inch thick, although it can be a little bit thinner. Just cut it to more or less the dimensions that you're going to need and leave everything square for the time being. Okay, so today is tomorrow. The plane is out of the clamps. It looks good. It's time to start cleaning the plane up. I'm going to get the plane, get the iron, drop it in, flip it over, and check and see what's going on with the projection of the iron. And what's going on is it glued up exactly the way I wanted it to. The iron is only eighth to a sixteenth of an inch from being at the bottom. That means I need to take enough stock off the bottom to get the front edge of the plane blade to start sticking through. Of course, the sandpaper stuck to a piece of glass method will work great for this too. I recommend you have two of them for this part, an 80 grit and a 100 grit. And the 80 grit is going to do for getting the surface down more quickly. You might also do a fast pass with your table saw to get it down as far as it needs to be. I've got the bottom of the plane planed down to the point where the iron sticks out of the mouth just a tiny bit. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. That means I don't want to plane this down any longer. But I do want to make sure it's as flat as possible. And no matter how badass you are at hand planing, pretty much nothing beats the sandpaper on glass method when you want to make something perfectly flat and smooth. I've also got to do a little bit of work to the mouth of the plane. This is the ramp right here, the 45 degree angle, and this tends to come down to a very, very sharp corner. And that's going to be fragile and really likely to chip. So I'm going to take a small file and work my way back and forth across that ramp just a few times until I can look in and see that instead of coming to a sharp point, it's at least, say, a sixteenth of an inch thick. That way I know it's not going to be damaged easily. I also need to put the iron in again, and I can see that while the iron is poking out, I don't have any clearance for the chips to come out. So I need to do a little bit of work on the wear angle over here. I'm going to take a larger and slightly more aggressive file, get it registered parallel on that wear angle, and work across it like this. While I'm doing this, I'd like to mention my newest patrons, Barbara Schultz and her niece, who apparently also likes woodworking and watches my channel, and also Eric Kv... Eric Kv... Kv oh, hell, man, I, I can't say your name. I'm just going to put it up on the screen. I, I hope that's okay. Thank you very much for being my patron, and thank you to all of my patrons. If anybody's interested in checking out all the stuff I have going on on Patreon and the community that's forming there, you can go to patreon.com slash rexkruger. And thank you very much. Now I'm going to lay out and drill the pin location. To get the pin, I'm going to go up one and one eighth inches from the sole of the plane and seven eighths of an inch from the ramp. The best way to drill this hole is in a drill press with a Forstner or a brad point bit that's sized exactly to fit your cross pin. But if you don't have a drill press, you can also take the two cheeks of your plane, lay them on top of one another, and then just drill through with a hand drill. That's also going to make the two holes line up 
close enough to get a good plane. Before you actually drill the hole, grab the off cut that you made when you cut out the two different angles and stuff that in. And then make sure your plane is sitting on top of a backer board too. Doing both of those things is going to keep these holes from blowing out while you're drilling. As long as you center the point right on the dot that you made during layout, you should be able to go all the way through with no trouble. With the pin installed, drop in the blade and then your piece of wedge stock. You want to use something really strong for this. I'm using teak, but maple or oak would work great too. And then you want to measure down from the pin to the bottom of the escapement. You want your wedge to extend most of the way down your iron and stop only maybe about this far from the bottom, maybe a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to make a small cut with a tenon saw at about the three quarter of an inch mark and then pair in towards that with a chisel or a band saw to create a little ledge so the wedge can sit against the pin. You can tell the wedge is fit correctly when it goes in and then slides against the pin with a nice hard clicking noise. That means it's engaging really well. This angle right here is a right angle. It's sharp and it could be a little bit fragile. So go ahead and take a round file or a piece of sandpaper wrapped around a dowel. Round that edge over and dress it back a little bit so that it can stand up to more impact. Now the end of your wedge shouldn't be straight like this because it's going to interfere with chips coming out. It should be nice and rounded. You can do that with files and rasps or with a sander. I'm going to go do it off camera real quick. At this point, I'm going to stop referring to this piece as a wedge because that's not really what we're making. What we're really making is a screw cap. It's going to work a lot like the lever cap on a Stanley plane. We're making a rigid piece of material like this it's going to hold the iron down along the edge and at a single point in the back. The only difference is that Stanley planes use a cam on a lever and we're going to put a screw mechanism in ours. It's a lot easier to make and not much more difficult to use. Turning this chunk of wood into a screw cap is not difficult. The first thing is that it needs to be shorter than your plane iron so that you can reach the iron with the adjustment hammer. So go ahead and let the iron overhang the piece of wood by a half an inch or so. Trace the back of the iron, and then cut off the waste. Now we're going to build the screw mechanism into the screw cap. For that, all you need is a small, common nut and bolt. They just need to fit together, not be too long, about an inch is about right, and the threads should go most of the way up the nut. This is about the smallest amount of thread you can get away with. I had to cut this nut down from a larger one, which is no problem, it's still going to work just fine. Once you have your hardware, find and mark the center line on the back of your screw cap. Then measure down about three quarters of an inch and mark that as well. In the middle of that, we're going to set the nut. So find an appropriate size drill bit and drill a hole that's either the same size or a little bit smaller than the nut. Once you've got your hole drilled and you know that your nut fits in there, you're also going to need a clearance hole that your bolt can pass through. So find the appropriate size drill bit and use the center mark left from your previous hole to drill all the way through the screw cap. If you have a pretty tight fit between the hole and the nut that you're using, you don't need any heavy duty adhesive. A little bit of CA glue around the exterior that's allowed to soak in and dry for a couple of minutes will usually get the job done. If it's a sloppier fit, that's no problem. Just use some five minute epoxy instead. That'll work really well and it just needs to dry a little longer. The nut isn't under much force and so it doesn't need much adhesive to stay put. While the nut in the screw cap is drying, we need to turn this bolt into a screw that we can turn easily by hand. Take any piece of dowel that you have in your shop, hardwood is best but it doesn't really matter, and cut off a thin slice. Half an inch to three quarters is about right and then drill it out just like you did for the nut. So you have a shallow recess in the back that the bolt will fit right into. Now we're going to glue this one into place too, but because this is going to be under a lot more force than the nut, because of all the twisting, we're going to glue it in by filling the recess with epoxy, 
setting the head of our bolt into that and then letting it dry for at least an hour or so. After that, you'll have a very solid adjustment mechanism for your plane and it'll be really easy to use. So I'll show you how I'm gonna design the shape of my plane. Here it is, this is the rear end that I'll be pushing. Here's the escapement in the mouth and this is the front. Now I wanna draw the shape on it and then cut it out first. I'm not very good at cutting curves freehand so I tend to grab round objects. I'm gonna use a small radius here, just this tomato can, to make a radius on the back of the plane. I wanna preserve as much height as possible and keep the plane pretty vertical in the back. So I'm gonna draw that curve in that way. And then as far as the front, I'd like a pretty graceful slope to the front. Doesn't have to be anything crazy, so I'll use a roll of tape to get me to the midpoint, and then a straight edge to bring me down, and then I've got a good curve for the front that I think I'll be happy with. And then I need to figure out how far down I need to dip in here so that I'll be able to access the plain iron. So let me grab the iron and put it in, and I'll put the screw cap on top of it, and that way I know where the iron is. Three quarters is still gonna give me a good amount of space above the pin. It's not gonna weaken the cheek too much, but that's a pretty good spot. I'll make the cheek my center point and make a mark there, and then I actually have the lid from a big stock top, and I'm gonna use that as my curve to scoop this out, and I'm gonna bias it toward the back a little bit because that's where the iron is actually gonna be sitting, in the back. So now with that, I've got three curves and I can take this to the bandsaw and cut it out and that's gonna be most of my shaping. So I just finished the basic shaping of this plane and I gotta be honest, I don't like it at all. It still kind of looks like a wooden pickle. It's ugly, um, it's too big and the proportions really don't look right. I compared it to one of my older wooden planes, this is a European design one, and I noticed that this plane is much narrower in the back it's shorter overall, and it doesn't have nearly as much rounding to it. It's got kind of a blockier shape. Since I like this plane and find it comfortable, I think I'm gonna make this plane a little bit more similar and make it smaller while I'm at it. Luckily, I built it too big to begin with, so there's plenty of extra meat on here to chop away at. So give me a second while I go and reshape this. Okay, after about 20 minutes of the bandsaw and the belt sander, I ended up with this, and I'm much happier with it. I think it looks nicer, a little bit more streamlined and less bulky. It's much more appropriate smoothing plane size. It still fits really nicely in the hand, and I also made some structural changes. I cut a little bit more off the back than I did off the front, and that had the effect of moving the mouth back a little bit. That's a feature that's common to Krenov planes, but uncommon to other wood planes, and by having the mouth further back, I should be able to pull the plane more effectively and get a good cut. I pull my Stanley planes pretty frequently, but I've never used a Japanese style plane, and I'm really interested in the body mechanics of being able to pull instead of push. It might make repetitive work a little bit easier, so I'm interested in exploring that with this plane. I also took a little time to refine the screw cap. Um, you really just want to soften any of the sharp edges, that way if you whack the edge of the screw cap with something, you're much less likely to damage it. So just bevel all of those sharp corners. Now, most of the work is done, except for the last, probably most crucial step, which is actually making it cut. So my chisel iron already had a bevel on it, but I took it to the grinder and refined it a little bit, just to make the edge a little bit more keen and ready for honing. Now I'm gonna flatten the back and hone it just like I would a normal iron. All right, now there's nothing left to do but test it. I've got some soft maple in the vise. Look at that! That's a shaving! That's pretty good shaving, let's see! Oh! Whoa! Look at that! That's... That is a good shaving, check that out! 
All right, so the plane takes a pretty decent cut, but it also clogs. I figured out that this wear angle is still a little bit too severe, and it needs to be worked back a little bit. This is what you call one of those good problems, because the mouth of my plane is too tight. That's easy to fix by just removing material. If it were too wide, then the plane would never take the super fine cut I'm looking for. So this part can be a little bit tedious. You need to work the mouth open a little bit, then test the plane. Then open it up a little bit more, then test the plane. I'm using a pretty fine cut file here, so it's slow going, but this is the biggest file I have that fits in the mouth of the plane. So <laughs> this is what I'm going with. So I've widened the throat and I worked on the screw cap a little bit. I made it a little bit of a sharper angle so the chip meets a little bit less resistance coming out. And I just wanted you to see this shaving I just got. It's really good, you can almost see through it. So I'm getting a much finer shaving and uh, the plane isn't clogging as much. So we're getting there. I've changed the shape of the plane significantly since I originally trued up the sole. I've made it shorter and I originally trued it up without the tension of the screw cap in place which is going to flex the body of the plane a little bit. So it's probably a good idea to go ahead and re-true the sole. And the way you do that is to put the iron and the screw cap in, retract the iron back into the body a little bit, and then tighten the screw cap down like you would for normal use. Then you can put some lines on there, just so you have an idea of what's going on. And I've got a fresh piece of 100 grit sandpaper here. Okay, that was less than 30 seconds of work on the sandpaper. All of my pencil marks are gone, and I can see just by looking at it, the sole of the plane is really perfectly flat now. Okay, this is the exact same board that defeated the wooden pickle. Let's see how it does with handmade plane Mark II. It's an excellent surface. The shavings are good. Blade holds an edge well. Mic drop. So okay, that's it. This is, okay, maybe not the simplest hand plane you can build. Maybe not the easiest. Maybe I should go back and retitle the video series the easiest good plane you can build because I think the little bit of extra time we spent doing things like making a screw cap, that was probably time well spent. I really like the adjustability of that and how I can set the tension exactly the way I want with sort of no guessing around. Um, the plane works really well. It leaves an excellent surface. It's very comfortable in the hand. It's light. Um, I think this might be the first thing I've ever made out of a beach and it's really easy to see why plane makers like it so much. It's beautiful wood. It feels nice. It works really well, carves beautifully. If I were going to make another one of these again, I would stick with everything I did except the wear angle and cutting that extra thing in there. Don't do that. That was a waste of time and I ended up uh, filing and chiseling almost all of that out to get the chips to actually eject from the plane. Other than that, I'm really excited at how this project came out. It cost a total of $13. Everything else was scraps and other junk I had laying around the shop. And this is a completely functional plane. If you didn't own a plane, you could make this and you would be able to smooth plane surfaces after you had run them through the jointer or the planer or after you had sanded them with coarse grit paper or if you just wanted a plane for basic shop tasks like putting chamfers on stuff or doing little bits of trimming, taking the corners off of boards, things like that. This will totally get it done. So if you have limited finances or it's hard for you to find planes around you, make a plane like this. It doesn't cost much money. It's not very difficult, and most of the effort is actually in the tuning up. If it doesn't work right straight away, spend a little bit more time working on the throat, flattening the bottom, honing the iron, stuff like that. You'll get there. It's just not as hard as some people make it seem. Anyway, thanks for watching.